Welcome to today's video. There's quite a lot of interest at the moment around cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Today, I'm going to show you an example of how we can pull cryptocurrency prices right into a spreadsheet using UiPath Studio X and Studio. Let's take a look. Let's start with an Excel spreadsheet because everyone loves a good Excel spreadsheet. So this is an example. I'm trying to show you how to use Studio X. We're using a fun uh, use case here in terms of Bitcoin and show you a few different techniques for extracting data from a web page. Um, there are apps that will help you pull prices anyway and try and consolidate. But let's just say that you've got an Excel sheet because you've got your uh, portfolio across multiple platforms. You want it in one place. You want to add a bit of conditional formatting. You want to do some additional calculations as well. Maybe you want to take this spreadsheet and send it somewhere else in terms of once you've got this data in there. So let's take a look at the sheet. What do we have? We've got the information about the coin, how much you invested, uh, have invested in it in terms of um, a dollar amount in column D, what quantity that then gives you. And what we can then do is if we have the quantity times by the latest price, so over here, that gives you the current value, um, which is calculated in column G. You can then take that, subtract the original value and to give you how much has changed over time and calculate as a percentage. So this spreadsheet is, is already has the formula in here. The only thing that needs to change, um, assuming your portfolio stays the same, by the way, in this simple example, I'm going to pretend that my quantity and my initial investment is not going to change. I'm more tracking performance over time. Uh, again, just to simplify it for this demo. This is the only column that changes the latest price. So how could you get the latest price? What could techniques does UiPath that would help provide that would help you here? The first one, screen scraping. So let's see if I wanted to get the value, for example, of Bitcoin. So let's go to the, let's see how we can pull the data. So the first thing I would like to do is to go to Google and show you. So if Google, in Google, if you type this BTC price USD, you will get have this returned in terms of a specific price. So we want to pull this information. This is how we're going to do it. In Studio, we are going to then open the browser to start with. So we can say open. And you've got application or browser. Bring that in. Uh, click there. Click on the browser you want it to open. And it will open Chrome now to the right screen. And then you just want to do get text. And this is essentially the screen scraping. So get text comes in here asks you where you want to indicate what's the value you're after. Now we are after this part of the text here. And as you can see, this is UiPath's computer vision in action as we're moving around, highlighting uh, different parts of the screen. And actually I've just seen this value here. This value here is the price of Bitcoin, but it's without any of the formatting like a comma. I quite like that. See if I can extract the text from this specific field. So if I click the text here, what UiPath is now doing, okay, this is interesting. It's highlighted in red saying that there is no reliable way to be able to extract this field uh, in terms of knowing exactly the unique element on the screen. It's suggested that maybe it should look for this value above it and look relative to this. Um, what I'm going to tell it to do is actually is search for, have a, is to look for the text here, which says United States. And I want it to look just alongside that. So I'm telling it to anchor from this element. So now it will look for this element saying United States in the drop down, and relative to that, it will look at the value next to it. So once it's pulled that text, what are we going to do to it? Well, we want to save that value. Um, so I'm going to save it right now. Click save for later. I'm going to call that value BTC price. Okay, now where do we want that to go? So for this time, this one, we want this to go into the Excel file. So let's get into the Excel file. How does that work? So first of all, we ask it to use an Excel file. We bring that in. We indicate which file we're talking about. I have it saved on the desktop. So if I go to the desktop and go into uh, the basic app here, and then I do uh, drop in the activity. So now what we want to do is we want to write First of all, what what to write and then where to write it. So the first thing, what do we want to write? Well, we want to write that value we saved early, earlier, the Bitcoin price. Where do I want to write it? I'm going to indicate specifically in the Excel where to do it. I'm going to say I want it to write in that cell here. Now, this is not the best way of updating and tracking prices, particularly if they're repeating. I will show you in a few minutes a better way of doing it. But for now, I wanted to say, let's just see if we just scraped it from the screen and typed it straight in, what would that look like? So I'm going to click confirm. So that's really, we've done that in what, four or five steps. So what now we're going to do is basically run and test this. So let me close my browser. 
let me check in Excel. Let me put in a value of zero for the Bitcoin value. So we'll know if it's been or one. We'll know if it's being updated correctly or not. Let's put a thousand. Uh, 5,000, which is what it was in 2017, right? <laughs> okay, so let's now come back and run our workflow. So what we're expecting it to do is to open Google, um, put in the search terms in terms of Bitcoin price in USD. There we go. We want to then extract the relevant uh, data from that cell using the anchor of the USD value and write it to Excel. So that's complete. Let's take a look. And if we go to our Excel file, we'll look at that. We can see that now the value has come in perfectly um, and is now being updated, which is great. Let's see if that matches. 47115 spot 20, 44715 spot 20. Great. However, that's not the best way of doing it. For a start, I had to tell point specifically which cells to do it. So how could we improve this process and make it better? Well, that takes us to attempt number two. So for attempt number two, we're going to use something slightly different. We're going to leverage Excel a little bit, really. So if rather than us having to put in specific values from the for the latest price of Bitcoin, wouldn't it be better to just have a reference table, like a table of data that we can just look up? So here what I'm doing is I've introduced a um, separate column called latest prices. And the way I'm pulling in here is I've got a V lookup. So I'm using Excel here, which is basically saying, well, what is the latest price? And uh, you know, it's it's using that pivot table functionality to get that into this sheet rather than relying on me going through one by one or doing anything manual. So um, good tip really, if Excel's there and you're in it, use Excel, you don't have to use a, a UI path or a robot to do all of this. Um, first standardize and simplify the process if you can. So this is what I've done here. I've done basically this value now is being, look, you can see a simple V lookup. It's looking at the name of the coin and based on that, it's pulling the latest price from this table here. So this is a list of 20 currencies or cryptocurrencies and the latest prices are here. Now, the fact that I've hooked it up like this means actually all I need to do is to update this table. This information here needs to update and my spreadsheet over here will actually uh, manage the rest for me in terms of the data being correct. So all we need to do is take uh, the group of prices and, and update the value here. And let me show you how I'm doing, how I populated this. So, so let's use a new price web page. So this page, um, okay, has got a list of all of the currencies. And what we can do is because it's structured as a table in a nice tabular format, we can use UiPath to extract the data from the table. So this is attempt number two, getting the prices from the data table, from getting the prices from a web page by extracting the tab the tabular data on the screen. So let me show you how we do that in Studio. So this is what we do. So we should go into UiPath Studio, the process name, um, table grab. Okay. Okay, the, what we're gonna do then is uh, we're gonna open the application. So let's do that first. We're gonna indicate which application, it's this one here. So I'll open Chrome to the right web page. Great. Now we want to use this function here, table extraction, such a useful function. I'm going to, if you look at our Excel sheet, what I'm looking for is to get just the coin and the price. I could extract more of the data if I wanted. It's simple if I just extract that the information. So let's go back and all right. So in studio, this is what we do. We open up the extraction wizard. It comes up with a screen like this. The first thing it says, go to the screen you're interested in and it tells you to select the element you want. So I am after the coin name here. So I'll click that. It then will ask you to, first it says, do you want to get everything? I don't want everything. Actually, I want to keep my reference table very simple. So I'm going to say no. Then it will tell me to select the second element. What's the second element I'm interested in? Here we go. And now what you will see is let's call this coin and do next. See what you see is that UiPath now has worked out from the pattern from those two examples, what value I'm trying to extract. So I'm going to call it coin. The next thing I need to do now is do extract correlated data, some data related to the first one. Come in here and grab the price. So if I click price, then it'll ask me for the second element. I'll come in here and select the price here and call this price. Do next, and we'll see a preview. So there you go, that's looking pretty good to me. So I will now hit finish.
it'll ask if my data is across multiple pages no i'm just going to focus on the top 20 the top 20 entries here so I do no and that's it the table will be extracted so now we've got the data extracted what do we do with it so we say we're going to save it for later so save for later use and call it uh, coin rates table okay so what's the next step is to put that in the excel file so we come here we say well, let's use excel we indicate the file that we want to uh, refer to which is the one on my desktop called vlookup which is the second version of this um, it'll, then we want to again come into excel we want to write the table data into there so we're talking about um, so if we search for write we want to write a range we don't just want to write a line or a single cell we want to write a range of data so you do write range bring it in here choose what to write so if I come you know the value I want it to write is what I saved before and then choose where to put it so I can say oh, actually I want you to come and put it into the tab in the current spreadsheet called latest prices and I also have defined a range called right prices so we can say yep stick it into that please okay perfect so now what that will mean is that will mean the data will come in here and it'll be entered into here so let me just just del put, set all of these to one for now or make these values some yeah make them all set to one fine so we're going to set all these prices for one just as a quick test and if we come back here we can now see yep if suddenly the price of all the cryptocurrency was one you would probably be losing 91.26 percent of your value this looks about right so now i'm going to run it i'm expecting the latest prices to all be replaced with the newest ones and i'm expecting that to give me a more realistic proposition in the valuation i'm just going to make sure this looks okay to me so it's going to open the browser it's going to um, extract the table from there save it into a field into a file called latest prices into this excel sheet into a tab called latest prices and and then a range called prices which i've defined previously cool let's run it so we'd expect it to open up the page uh, open up a browser so the robot will start executing it will open up the browser it's navigating to the page it's now extracting the data from the page and then it will just finish running and then We'll have a look at the Excel file. Okay, great. It's no, it's completed. So let's take a look. So in the Excel file, first of all, brilliant. You can see the prices have updated here, um, which is great. And then if I come into the latest, my latest view now, we can see that the prices have updated. So all of the prices are now correct based on the latest market data, and that gives me a much better valuation in terms of what it, this hypothetical portfolio would be worth. That's method number two. Now let's look at method number three. For option number three, we're gonna get a little bit more funky, a little bit more technical, and we're gonna use the UiPath Marketplace because it turns out that on here, someone has already done the hard work for us. There is already a custom activity created by our, in our UiPath Marketplace that will allow you to pull the crypto prices anyway. None of this website screen scraping, someone's already made the calls for us. And if we have a look at the activity, here are all the different types of coins it will pull for. Brilliant. Here are also the different, some of the currencies it's available to use. Looks good to me. Let's get cracking. Now for this activity, because, let me show you something, because the output here, because it can, allows, here we go, the result is a string and a data table. So what this is saying is the output from this activity is multiple things. So it's a little bit more technical than the usual activity, which just gives you one thing. And that means we need to use Studio rather than Studio X for this one. Let me show you how that works and how it looks in Studio. So this is Studio with a brand new file, so a brand new uh, sequence. So first of all, what we would need to do is and is to come down and click the Marketplace tab here, and you can actually install it directly from here if I type in crypto. So there you go. The crypto get crypto values activities are already there um, and are available for you to install from here. Now I've, I've already installed it. That's why it's appearing with a green arrow here. You can, of course, um, install, download and install it from the Marketplace webpage or, you know, for convenience, it can be done direct from Studio as long as you've set up this Marketplace link. So um, this is the activity. It does say it's built by UiPath, but not officially supported, meaning it's part of our Marketplace. It's not part of the core package when you install UiPath. 
Let's take a look then. So we've got it installed. Excellent. First thing we're going to need to do is actually make a call from this activity. So let's take a look at the activity. So if I come into my activities list and I just search for crypto, here we go, get crypto values. Let's drag and drop that straight into our first sequence. So first it's asking you for a list of coins that you're interested in. So what that I've learned from the activities, we can send it a list actually. So I can actually give it a list of Ethereum, Bitcoin, ADA, BNB. These are the ones that I'm going to include. Again, you could give it more currency wise. I'm just going to tell it to uh, just say USD. Now, the, this is the interesting part in terms of the result. And this is why we have to use Studio actually. We need to look at some of the properties here. So if you have a look here, you can see that there are two types of output in terms of how the data comes back. You can just have a string, almost like a ticker of data, or you can have the data table. And that's what I'm after. So if I come into data table, do control K to create my variable and say crypto prices. So there we go. So what this is going to do when at runtime, then it's going to get the crypto values for us. We don't need to worry how it's doing that. It's going to go off and get the latest values in dollars and return that into a table. All that's left for us is to write that table into our spreadsheet. So let's get our Excel spreadsheet going. Pull in the Excel piece and tell it which, um, which sheet we want to look at, which is the one on the desktop. Cool, view lookup. And what we then want to do is just this right range activity. So this will basically will tell it what we want to, what is it that we want to write. So this will be the um, the, t the output value here, which we called crypto prices. So we say crypto prices. And then it's a case of telling it where is it that we want to save this. Um, what is the name of the sheet? And if you remember, it was called latest prices. Let's try running the file, see what happens. I'm going to close my Excel file and uh, run my bot. I can see Excel. OK, and it's finished. So let's take a look now. Let's go into the Excel file. Have a look at the VLOOKUP file here. And we can see that now in the latest prices tab, we have the coin. The, the currency it's in and then the price. Beautiful. However, this is making our VLOOKUP not quite work because our VLOOKUP was expecting the second column to be, um, yeah, it was, it was expecting the second column to be, it wasn't expecting currency value. So VLOOKUP just needs to change to get the third value in the field, which is actually the price rather than the currency. As long as I do that, we'll be all good. So as I just drag this down, there we go. Delete these. So this is actually now pulling the latest. Yeah, it's basically taking the latest value from there. So um, based on those four currencies, so let's just try another test. Let's just set these all to 20. Then we've got a significant loss. Let me then close this. Let me come back into into studio and run it again. So I'm running the process right now. In the taskbar, I'll see Excel just briefly open and then close. There it is. Now it's closed again. It says it's done. Let's go into Excel. If I open my file, which is called V with V lookup. And now we can see the prices are updated there. It's got the latest values in the Excel sheet right there. And now when I go to my latest, I see my portfolio portfolio has a more realistic value. So there you have it. Three different ways to use UiPath to pull prices. The first one was using a basic web scraping off the back of a Google search. Second one, we got a little bit more advanced. We used the table extraction feature in Studio X to pull that data and save it to an Excel sheet where we had a VLOOKUP. And thirdly, Arguably the most advanced yet actually the simplest to do. We used a pre-built integration that was already pulling the prices via an API from the UiPath marketplace and just it built that into our workflow. For that, we had to use Studio, which is the more advanced version of Studio X. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more content soon.